This is the most design I've ever seen in my life in surfboards. surf shop, a home growth surf shop, and uh, you know there's a lot of uh, options for the surfer to to, uh, to go you know, shop wise to go into and, and to get a board or get you know a wetsuit or whatever. And uh, it's neat, you know, that Randy has this sort of organic, you know, real rootsy homegrown aesthetic here at the PB Surf Shop. Now, as you know, tonight we're celebrating uh, the local shapers here in town, and um, uh, one of the things that we're doing in a couple of weeks is the Sacred Craft Consumer Surfboard Expo. I, I couldn't stand up here without doing a, a plug for my event, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, and we're going to be honoring Simon Anderson and the 30th anniversary of the thruster design, and Simon will be in town with a, a host of other surfboard luminaries. Uh, many of which are in this room right now with us. Um, Gary Linden, Carl Ekstrom, Dennis Murphy, a host of guys, Lermo, uh, Kevin Connolly. You know, it might be a good time now to bring you guys up on this stage. So Gary, Carl, all of you shapers that are here for this Q&A, for the seminar, please come up because this is not about me, this is about you guys. Uh, one of the things that I also wanted to mention is that um, part of Sacred Craft, work, as well as honoring Simon Anderson, we are putting on a shaping competition called the Young Guns of Shaping. And the Young Guns of Shaping is presented by a local surfboard company here, Simmer Surfboards. And Chris and Jesse are here. Why don't you wave real quick for me? There you go. These guys are helping me put on the Young Guns of Shaping <laughs> presentation, competition. And these four young shapers, they're all under 25. That's young, except for Kevin, who's probably <laughs> close to 30, I don't know, but anyway, these young shapers, I want to bring you guys up as well. Ryan Birch, Tyler Warren, <laughs> Gary Straley, and DJ Kane. Come on up, don't be shy, we're not going to bite. Hey everybody, this is Chris Clark with Simmer Surfboards. Simmer Surfboards uh, is sponsoring the Young Guns of Shaping event. Um, we really want to support the young shapers out there who are the future of our sport. <laughs> My name is Tyler Warren, I'm 24 years old, I'm from Dana Point, California. And I'm uh, going to be one of the featured Young Gun Shapers this year. Yeah, it's a good positive thing and uh, art in motion. Just one of the kind of guys who is just big time stoked with the sport. That's what I like about Tyler. My name is Ryan Birch, I'm 21 years old. And I'm from Encinitas, California, but like to say I'm from Cardiff because I like it here a lot. My name's DJ Kane. I'm 22, originally from Florida, now living in Lucadia, California. I uh, shape surfboards. Everything from fish to shortboards to bonzers, tweenies, one through five fins. Hi, my name is Gary Straley. I'm 24 years old from Cardiff, California. I began shaping boards about six years ago when I was 18, and here I am, one of the 
Young Gun Shapers. Sign up and win a free custom Simmer Surfboard experience by following Young Guns of Shaping and the Expression Session at surfstar.tv. Back in 2005, I believe it was, December of 2005, Clark Foam closed their doors. And that really started off sort of a, a flashpoint in the surfboard building industry relative to um, what was going to take place in the next uh, eight to ten years. And of course, there was a lot of excitement. At first, it was quite a scary time, I imagine, for these guys. and. Um, there was a rush on blanks and a run on surfboards, and um, but everything sort of shook out, and we are where we're at now. And um, since that time, you know, there's been a bunch of new blanks on the market, and there's been a real uh, a real push in different technologies. There's been carbon fibers, and even the sandwich construction boards in Asia have gone different places. And uh, it's really um, it's really I, I would think that it's been really refreshing um, in the surfboard. Uh, building industry since Clark closed down. So perhaps what we could do is um, I'd like to start off with uh, Gary Linden and I'd like to have Gary tell us uh, what he thinks about uh, where we've con where we are since uh, the 2005 December day when when Clark closed down uh, relative to now. That that's a five year span I guess it is now. Um, where's the surfboard industry now Gary? Um. Well, I'll just go back to that day on Clark Foam Clothes and um, I went up to take over at Walker Foam and we were doing about 50 blanks a week there with a 15 year old factory that had had no maintenance and it was over Christmas vacation and I got it up to 500 blanks a week in two weeks. It was the middle of the barrio in Wilmington and I was pulling guys off the street and just going, okay today you're blowing foam today you're working in the woodshed and it was pretty amazing you know watching how foam got made and uh, then everybody started making foam and it got tough because there was a lot of competition and uh, a lot of people spent a lot of money but I think today we have really really great foam. Everything that was going on five years ago was a uh, real status quo. I mean there was no no advancement. We've already been into the uh, epoxy and, and uh, polystyrene blanks for a while, 10 or 15 years prior to that. A few guys are still dabbling in it. Hello? Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, a few guys are still dabbling in the, uh, in the uh, epoxy world, but uh, when polyurethane went away uh, temporarily, I, I remember calling Gary at Walker saying, hey, um, you got any blanks? And he said, Look, just take a month off, and you'll have all the foam you need within no time at all. Well, that wasn't exactly true. That's not really the way it worked out, the way it played out. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's not, it wasn't Gary's fault. There were a lot of people that did come in. Unfortunately, I think some of the foam manufacturers that came in were less than reputable. They, they were trying hard to, to make a product that we could use, but we were kind of spoiled because of the... Uh, the rocker patterns and, and the multiple densities that Clark offered. So when uh, when U.S. Blanks came up, came around, uh, I was thrilled just to hand all my rocker patterns back over to the same people I've been dealing with, and now I could offer the same boards once again that I was building. And this time the foam was better. The foam definitely improved. And got to hand it to Kim and uh, and uh, all the guys up at Clark or Walker Foam. Uh, strike that U.S. Blanks. You know what? I'm one of those. Uh... I'm one of those guys that walks into a, 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 a shaper stall and I've got every single dimension on the paper and I've got a color palette and I've got the fin size and I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Kevin Connolly, I'm asking you now if, if a guy like me walks in with just every dimension and a color palette and it has to match and this is the color that my crib was when I was four. And, what do, you, what do you say to that guy? How do you deal with that guy? Do you like that? Do you like a guy to come to you with a lot of dimensions? Or do you prefer to sort of um, tackle it on your own, maybe kind of give him a once-over and go, all right, this is what you need? All right, first of all, thanks for everybody here, um, the Gordons and just everybody, Randy. <laughs> Great pleasure. Um, basically, the, the thrill is, is to see what somebody wants to bring to me. 
and what are they going to bring to me and what am I going to build in my image in my head of what they can do surfing and can I use what they give me, color or to any, any dimensions, to my benefit to aid them in a better surfer by making them the board that they want and by going through history and what I've written myself and, and or seen then I, I tried to push people and or aid them towards a direction if their numbers are kind of funny or something that I'd like to see you know a little bit more of a you know what's the board look like from 20 feet instead of you know painting by numbers you know I think it's really important the custom aspect and being able to get together with individuals that have anything in their mind that they want to make because it's the sky's the limit you know we have endless blanks to make product from and we have you know, colors and glassing and all kinds of great materials from epoxy to polyester. So I think, I think it's a wonderful thing to have somebody come to me with as much as they want and be able to, to try to obtain as much as they want. I'm going to ask uh, Carl Ekstrom this. Uh, there's a lot of great shapers in San Diego County, Carl, and um, there's a lot of guys that perhaps don't get enough credit. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe you could throw out one or two guys that you think are sort of underrated, that you really think are, are special surfboard craftsmen, and that don't maybe get enough credit, and explain why. It's kind of hard, because uh, <clears throat> we're all trying to do different things. You know, and it's like, um, um, we're not all trying to do the same thing, and it's hard to... Uh, actually come in and assess what someone's trying to do and a lot of times you don't even really realize what they're trying to do. Uh, but uh, I grew up with uh, Al Nelson who was an incredible shaper, a real production shaper. And, uh, I, and Pat Kern is another guy I grew up with that was very, very talented, that is very, very talented. And uh, those guys, uh, you know, it's for, with them it's, it's really an art form and um, they're just uh, super um, skilled at what they do, and uh, with, and when they shape, you know, it's what they're doing isn't arbitrary. It's something uh, that they really plan to do, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's it's not arbitrary at all. And so I really respect people that can can get what it is that they're trying to do out of a piece of material, and uh, these shapers are are extremely good. All right, thank you very much. Now, um, I'm not sure how far this cord will reach, guys, but if you have a question, raise your hand, and uh, we'll get these guys to answer it. I have a question for two of the shapers, the younger longboard aficionados, both Michael Wood and Kevin Connolly. I'd like to get an answer from both of you, maybe Ryan Birch as well, but uh, for the younger standpoint, what do you guys think individually makes a, no, a board nose ride the very best? I don't know. I, I think in time, you know, it has a lot to do with a lot of different combinations of things and it has to do with your board speed and control of that and being able to control it from the nose. Um, in my theory, I only built a nose rider to ride from the front third of the board. That's it. Um, I've been uh, doing a lot of, lot of experimenting on different rocker patterns and um, I found certain rocker patterns work better for nose riding. Um, you know, uh, for a while it was everything. You know, nose, nose riders were just flatter rocker, flatter rocker, and um, you get a lot of speed out of, out of a flatter rocker, but it doesn't necessarily make it nose ride any better. You end up purling a lot more. Um, so I was trying to go real drastic on rockers up in the nose, up in the tail, trying out different things, but. Um, I've noticed it works really well to you know keep a flatter nose but add more rocker in the tail, um, and it, it almost seems like the you the more detail in the tail is what makes a, a board nose ride better. Um, whether you have a bunch of a bunch of concave or even just belly up at the nose, I've seen both work really well. But it, it's mainly how the the rocker pattern is in the tail, and um, what kind of belly is involved back in front of the fin and everything. So. Um, I've noticed that the, the tail seems to be the, the most important part for nose riding. 